Hey guys, I'm looking at this condenser fan motor. We talked about ohms on different coils. We looked at contactor coils last time. So we're going to take a look at different ohm readings on a condenser fan motor. Sort of see what they look like so you can see what you can expect in the field. And we're going to take a look at the three wire, and, uh, four wire configurations for condenser fan motors. This particular condenser fan motor is a Trade Pro TP-C25-1SP2. So I got single speed, quarter horsepower, 1075, 208, 230, 1.4 amps, 60 hertz, single phase, 48 frame, 10 microfarads. Now we'll be using some capacitors in the examples in this video, but they're not the proper sizing for this fan motor. It's just what I had on the truck. Uh, I'm going to be using one to show you just how the three wire and four wire wiring uh, comes into play. So we have four wires coming off this condenser fan motor, but really only from three locations. When these condenser fan motors, especially the aftermarket ones, come into play, you'll have two brown wires that run to your capacitor. And these two brown wires, which I'm kind of fishing out here, you have a brown wire and one with a brown and white stripe typically. So these will have stakeons on them, you know, and they will plug into the capacitor, just like so. I mean, imagine there's stakeons there. They'll plug into the capacitor like this, and you'll hang it in the cabinet. And then your two other wires, which are black and white on this particular machine, will just run to your contactor like so. Now, if you want to go back with the three-wire configuration, that's fine. Because let's take a look at these two brown wires here. The brown and white stripe and the white wire are actually coming from the same location. We can confirm that. Let's put the meter on ohms. I have my field piece clips on my south wire meter because I don't have any south wire clips yet. So we're looking at ohms. Oh, let me get it on there. We're looking at ohms and we see we have 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ohms. So these two wires are basically originating on the same winding. So knowing that, and knowing that we have a brown wire and this brown and white going to the capacitor, we can eliminate the brown and white wire. So let's just get it out of the way. We know we can wire the brown and the brown and white to the capacitor single run, but let's say we have a dual run. We're going to swap out the dual run since we're putting a new motor in. We have the terminals on top, fan with a single plug. Herm for the compressor with three plugs, and Common with four plugs. So we have that. Now our black wire from the motor is our Common winding, but that doesn't go to the Common on the capacitor. That's going to go back to the contactor. You have a Common from the compressor on one pole and run on the other pole. So let's say we had our black wire running back to the contactor like it's supposed to. We'll leave that there for a second. Now what about the other two wires? We have our white and our brown. Now our brown is a start. And we can test this with ohms. We'll check that in just a second. And our start typically goes to our fan terminal. Everybody knows this stuff. Like so. It goes to our fan terminal. And then our white can go one of two different places. If there's a jumper from the other side of the contactor that the common is over to the common on the capacitor, the white can go right there. It can also go back to the contactor by itself. And you know, if the white goes back to the contactor, it's going to be on the opposite side as the common. The difficult thing with this is that the common on the capacitor and the common on the motor are different wires. It's just a different uh, meaning for that terminology. So you can use three wire or four wire. So let's check in between the different wires. And we know that the white and the white and brown are the same, so the white and brown is going to be out of the way for the rest of the experiment. So let's check. If we have start, run, and common, we should have our greatest resistance in between start and run. And start is the brown wire, and run is the white. So let's hook them up. We're looking at our ohms here, and we have 
36.4 ohms. So let's take the start to the common. We have 15.4. So we should have, because these two had to add up to the other distance, around 20 in between start or in between run and common. Excuse me. And we have 21. So it looks like the motor is good as far as the ohms in between the different windings. We can now see how we wire them to different capacitors. One thing, if we have a moving blade while we're testing ohms, it's going to whack things out, and I'll show you that. Let's say we have everything hooked up. We have common there and run. We should be around 21. And if you look, when the blade starts spinning, it's going to go all out of whack. So make sure that blade's sitting still while you're testing. 